the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Happy Fourth. Thank you, brothers and sisters. This has been a different Fourth of July, and yet we find ourselves in the house of God, ready to worship, ready to pray for our country, for the needs of our nation, especially the needs of the uh, black community in our country, and for that matter, all, all those who in the world suffer discrimination or are the underdog. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. basement of your son have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he. Meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, 
the fowl of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be, shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you will labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. to live by the Spirit, the testament of that is that we are here and we feel how our souls and spirits uh, deteriorate, so to speak, over the week and we come to be replenished, right, by the grace of God, by the reflection on the scripture readings, we go back home, hopefully, you know, enlivened. And for that matter, our brothers and sisters who are watching us from home, many of them um, tune in to be one with us in, in our community, in our parish mass. It's from Romans 8 that we hear this uh, teaching that we ought to live by the Spirit if we want to live and have joy. Because if we choose the deeds of the flesh, we die. And we are not happy. The deeds of the Spirit are those that proclaim life, liberty, equality, all under one God, one nation, with liberty and justice for all. I sound like a little one trying to uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. So, if at any course in this um, homily you feel like I have these deep feelings towards this particular topic that I'll be mentioning, feelings that are not good, that perhaps are come from the flesh. Flesh is not just sexual sins. Flesh has to do with anger, with envy, with greed, with jealousy. Any of the seven capital sins have to do with flesh. So that's why we come. And um, if you feel that you have that in you and it's deeply seated, please come to confession. Come to confession. Confession is a wonderful sacrament not only to forgive sins, but it's also to give us the grace to fight against inner passions or inner um, feelings that we cannot control. They just, they are deeply seated in us. And uh, we, we want, that's one of the tools we have in the Catholic Church to uh, help us uh, live by the Spirit. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. That's Psalm 145. And from the ninth chapter of the book of, of the prophet Zechariah, we hear that this King shall come. It's a prophecy. He shall come proclaiming peace to the nations. And so we, we want that, first of all, within ourselves and then in our country. Even with COVID-19, peace, peace. We, we pray for the, those who suffer the hardships of the, of the virus, which is the whole world. So we want peace and calm and humility to, to contribute. We're all in this together. We hear that a lot. So let us follow the authorities, uh, local authorities' um, directives 
in, in an effort to contribute to the wellness of everyone. And in Matthew chapter 11, we hear from Jesus himself, I will give praise to you, Father, for although you have hidden these things to the little ones and the learned, you have revealed them um, um, to the little ones, even though you have hidden these things to them. Wise. I want your help in preaching. <laughs> it's not a little one. Even though you have hidden these things to the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. I caught your attention, right? <laughs> and so um, we want to be humble in dealing with things that have to, uh, have to do with the Spirit, for us to live by the Spirit. On Thursday, we had our first Zoom meeting with the pastoral council of the parish, the, the one and only council composed of 12 parishioners that helped me making decisions about the parish. Uh, where, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What, where should we be going? And um, it was wonderful. And, and we devoted one hour uh, as part of the opening prayer talking about the death of uh, George Floyd and the discrimination, the violence, the riots, what the church should be saying, and that hasn't been heard, hasn't been, hasn't spoken enough. And it was Deacon Elmer who, after the meeting the next day, uh, sent us uh, the statements of uh, Archbishop Gomez, the president of Bishop's Conference, and, and a few other bishops speaking out um, against racism and uh, injustice and to hold uh, those who are perpetrators of um, crimes, of uh, excessive force, especially by the police, uh, to hold them accountable and that it is, it is seen and people see that is, is, is justice is being done. And because people don't see that, then there's, that's why we see what we're seeing. I have this image of children playing in the park and children are white and some others are black and they carry on with their games or with their running arounds and just, uh, just calling uh, for each other to do this or that or run and they don't see color. They see what's, what's inside. And uh, I wish we as adults could uh, play the game of life like that. We get tarnished by a lot of uh, prejudice, prejudice and negative influences that um, condition our behavior and our reaction. So the black community is hurting in our midst and so is the police, you could say. We want to ask the Spirit of God to help us avoid stereotyping. Gays and lesbians go, will go to hell. We, 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 we have Catholic Christians or Christians of any denomination with that kind of jargon. And, uh, and it's wrong to say, to make a statement like that. Homosexual activity is wrong and is sinful. Gays and lesbians are sons and daughters of God. And we, they deserve dignity and res they have dignity and they deserve respect. Same thing with atheists and agnostics. They are sons and daughters of God. They deny the existence of God or they think that it's impossible to know God. And, and yet they are people who deserve our respect and they may be saved faster than a baptized Catholic who spends his life judging others. While there are some atheists that spend their lives doing philanthropy. So let no one judge others. Let God be the judge. Or immigrants, they should go back. They, they are criminals. The Holy Family was immigrant. Can you imagine back in those days, Egyptians telling Mary and Joseph, go back, and Jesus, go back, you don't belong here. This is for Egyptians, not for Jews. 
the police force is undeniably good and is another stereotype. That is not true. I was told, this is probably not official, but I was told about 6% of the police force is racist. And the worst, the worst thing of all is that uh, when they are trained, it is fairly known. They are not uh, shy about their, their views. And yet they complete their training, they finish their training. It's um, something similar with the priesthood, that um, all priests are bad. They all, they all abuse, you know, children, and it's wrong. I want to say it's much less than 6% of the priests have done that in the past. And that's why the church has been pressed by, from so many circles to stop that circle and to not train any more candidates to the priesthood that may show that kind of sickness. Black people, another stereotype is that black people are dangerous and violent. And it has no, no bearing whatsoever because of the protests and riots we see. We cannot come to that conclusion. Bishop Mark Sides from El Paso. I'm going to quote several bishops here, and that'll be the end of my reflect homily. To say that Black Lives Matter is just another way of repeating that God has a special love for the forgotten and the oppressed. I like that. Of course, all lives matter, but in this time and age, to say black lives matter, speak volumes. It is true, all lives matter, but do not belittle the importance of what's happening by saying that that's political, we should, that there's a, a bias in that movement, etc. It is Archbishop Gomez who also sheds light with this quote. He quoted uh, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. in his statement on George Floyd and the protests in American cities. Riots are the language of the unheard. He continues, Archbishop Gomez. The protests we are seeing in our cities reflect the justified frustration and anger of millions of our brothers and sisters who even today experience humiliation indignity and unequal opportunity. Legitimate protests should not be exploited by persons who have different values and agendas. Burning and looting communities, ruining the li livelihoods of our neighbors does not advance the cause of racial equality and human dignity. Archbishop of Chicago, Cardinal Blaise or Cupich, he says, we should be less quick to judge the proportionality of their response, of the blacks, and start talking more about the proportionality of ours, the non-blacks. And so we see on TV Congress offering a, a bill of reform of the police, the Senate you not know, approving it, and Posting another one, forgive me, I'm not a politician, so I don't know the details of each. And then President Trump saying, well, we don't seem to agree for the House of Representatives and Senate. So it all looks like we're going nowhere in terms of a real reform of our police force. I want to finish by quoting Pope Paul VI in 1972, if you want peace, work for justice. And so, in the words of Archbishop Gomez, we should honor the sacrifice of so many black lives by removing racism and hate from our hearts and renewing our commitment to fulfill our nation's sacred promise, to be a beloved community of life, liberty, and equality for all. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in you.
one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us to make him for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who became man. For our sake, he was crucified with the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, and in the world of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glory of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his merciful help. With confidence we now pray. That the church may evermore reflect the truth of God's love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders, especially President Trump, will facilitate the conditions necessary to bring about healing, safety, respect, and peace in our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those responsible for public safety and health care come home safely to their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are weary from the burdens of daily life will find support and solace in the life of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the faithful who have died are resting in the place Jesus prepared for them, especially Anthony Salazar, Maria Tinajero, and Norma Baza, who recently died. Today we also pray especially for Robert, for Rocco De Feliz, Alfred Rodriguez, Jim Griffin, and Larissa Janiki. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from COVID-19 and all serious illness, for all that have died from it. Have mercy for those that are ill now, bring healing. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. Help our nation to grow in a greater appreciation for each other as your sons and daughters. May the trials we experience today strengthen us to be bridges of hope for tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Savior. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for us, for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Michael, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and command and for my divine teaching we dare to say together Our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We acknowledge the Father with a simple gesture. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That's a beautiful song. And, um, you know, I wasn't going to preach on the topic of racism until the pastoral council brought it up to my attention on Thursday. Uh, granted, there was an opening prayer that led to it, but um, I hope that you are glad that I brought it up. It's better that we, that we do it. Thank you. Than to one brother of ours step out and left the church in the middle of my preaching and just continue preaching, you know. And uh, just pray, let's, let us pray for one another so that we, uh, you know, we learn to live as brothers and sisters and we um, open our hearts to the true value that each one of us has as, as sons and daughters of God and that we, that we get along and that we love one another. The pictures of the pastoral council members are in the foyer of the, of the church. It's a poster immediately as you go into the foyer to the left and you'll see it there if you're interested to know who are these distinguished members of our, our community. Also, uh, Deacon Harvey's uh, family is on quarantine, well, especially his son, uh, John, who is, um, yeah, his son, John, is like one that tested positive for COVID-19. His son-in-law, John, uh, married to his daughter, Anne, and so that, uh, household is on quarantine and um, Deacon Harvey and his wife also uh, decided to uh, be on self-quarantine for 14 days so that's why you won't see him or them around keep them in your prayers for healing I think all is, is overall is, is well and I think he has uh, John Slaughter has uh, recovered it was a fever but not very strong and, and it's all okay Oh, thank you, yes, yes. Um, you've noticed a very faithful and committed member of our congregation who is also uh, one of our religious education coordinators uh, for the youth for Life King and Edge, and that is uh, Bert Hernandez. Just like I, I asked the kids when they got confirmed, what have you, please turn around. I think I, wanna, I want the community to acknowledge, please turn around, <laughs> Bert Hernandez, you know, he's been live streaming all the masses, and I bless you, Bert. And it's only uh, fair that we try to find somebody else in the community that would be his backup, so that he doesn't always, every week, have to be the one, you know, live streaming. It's, uh, we, we have stopped live streaming the weekday masses because we have room. We, have, we are no longer limited to 10, but um, it's, and, and so we are not live streaming weekday masses, but there's only one mass per weekend either. So like this weekend is the Saturday evening that is being live streamed, and this is the same mass as tomorrow, so we only need to videotape it once every weekend. So if you know somebody or you yourself feel like you can do the job, uh, are there any particular guidelines that I need to give now? Well, okay. Anybody who is interested, we can, on, on. anyone who's interested in helping, uh, I can meet with them and we can go over everything that we would need to, right. to discuss. So. Okay. It's very Thank simple. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So he never asked for this, for actually, but he wa he welcomed the idea, you know, of uh, somebody, sometimes somebody else doing it. I think it shows uh, richness in the in our community. Thank you for reminding me that I think I don't know why I have the binder here, but I don't look at it. <laughs> Every members of the same house, members of the same household may sit together. Yes, same household, not same family. Okay, but. In the, one of our confirmation masses, one pew was full, and I said, wow, this is a large family, and uh, they were cousins, but they were not, 
So they were not supposed to be sitting together, cousins or people in the same family that don't live together. They need to sit separately. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.